Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to wherever you are watching us. I am Martin Rauchbauer from Open Austria in San Francisco. And I'm Eva Schöfer at the Austrian Cultural Forum in Washington DC. Welcome and thank you all for being part of this very special moment of No Place Like the Future. In the upcoming two hours, we will show you the exciting outcomes of the Transatlantic Art Project. Um, we will talk to the artists in Washington, in New York, in Los Angeles, and in San Francisco, and to the people behind the project. So no place like the future. What kind of place is that? Maybe this guy, Thomas More, who wrote this book, Utopia in 1560, knew the answer. He was imagining a perfect island and called it Utopia or no place. Ever since, artists have dreamed up their respective version of Utopia, imagining a better future. And a better future is exactly what we need today three months ago. Uh, and this is why we asked artists from Austria and the United States to think about their own utopia. So over the last eight weeks, they worked together on the joint art project, despite not being able to physically meet and interact with each other. And today we will finally see the outcomes of these collaborations. So here is how it works. In the first hour, uh, you will learn about the project, meet artists and the people behind No Place Like the Future. In the second part, we will invite you to leave uh, this Zoom webinar and join us for a virtual gallery tour on a new digital makers platform, Make Space, uh, whose advancement was propelled through the artistic collaboration of two No Place artists, Asa Raskin and Jens Vetter. This is a world premiere of this platform and we invite all of you to join the experiment of an actual shared immersive experience online. As with all software launches, some bugs are unavoidable. So bear with us as we experiment with new formats. If you're interested to stay on for the second part of the vernissage and participate in our virtual adventure, this is what you need to know. Download the software in order to be able to access the platform. Now I'm going to post in the chat uh, box, I am going to post uh, the tutorial, uh, which is a web link, web link uh, jensfetter.de and so on. And there you can uh, click on it and download uh, the uh, software. We'd like to point out that MakeSpace works best for Apple Mac OS systems. The Windows version is only for advanced users. Also, if you plan to join MakeSpace, make sure to wear headphones while on the platform. Okay, so this is the only occasion for all the artists to meet as a group. Uh, and we are really excited about it. Uh, thank you for being here today. All the artists you see here on the screen. Uh, we are all present and we have a very crowded screen, but I think it's definitely worthwhile. And by the way, this picture provides for a great screenshot, so take advantage <laughs> of it. Of course, you can always switch on the speaker's view format if you want to see the current speaker in a bigger size. But please make sure that you always mute your microphone except for the time when it's your turn to speak. So, let's now move on. Um, let me move and introduce to you the one person that set all of this in motion and initiated this project a few months ago when we were all in the midst of the corona crisis. Our very own ambassador of Austria to the United States, Martin Weiss, joining us from the embassy in Washington DC. Welcome, Martin. Hi guys, uh, great to be with all of you. Um, and yes, you, you asked me to say a, a few words about how, how this all began. And actually, uh, it's uh, like rewinding uh, two or three months when we were in the middle of this this COVID crisis, and it actually was a bit of a of a doom and gloom moment because uh, we were basically busy on the one hand with uh, trying to help Austrians uh, leaving the United States, we were organizing repatriation flights to Austria. And on the other hand, we were basically canceling everything that we had planned for, for our summer and for our fall semester. So it was a bit of a moment where you sit and say, all the work that you have been doing is, is going down the drain. Uh, and after this doom and gloom moment, we both sat together and, and we, I said, listen, 
we have to be able to come up with something that we can do, something meaningful we can do in spite of all this adversity and of this crisis. And we had then this idea and said, well, it has to be something that talks about the future uh, because we have to think beyond this. It has to be something that connects the United States and Austria. So what can it possibly do? And you know, from a, a moment, from a discussion, you, you take the next step, you talk, we talked to our uh, friends and colleagues in San Francisco, Martin and, uh, uh, and Clara, we talked to our friends in Los Angeles, Simone and Andreas, we talked to Michael in New York, and we kind of concocted our, 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 our idea. Um, and then, of course, we talked to all of you because you can have the, the greatest idea. If you have no takers, you won't get very far. Uh, and thank God you all agreed to work with us on this. And we came up with this website and with the idea of what kind of project this could be. And we have a fantastic group of artists in the United States, in Austria, who, who invested their brain power and their time into this project. And I, I'm so happy, you know, this is uh, an Aikido moment, you know, in Aikido, you take the strength of your opponent and make it into your own. So in a way, we took the strength of all this crisis and I think made it into something very positive. I myself haven't seen all of the artworks that came in. I have seen uh, a number of them and they are funny. They are surprising. They are really something. And to me, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy today that, you know, something that started uh, really in, in, in kind of a dark moment. And today we are at the fancy opening of an, of an online vernissage. I mean, how good can life be? So listen, thank all of you who participated in this to make this possible. This is fantastic. And thank all of our team in the United States. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you see a finished product and you say, well, of course, this is how it's meant to be. There is a lot, a lot of work that went into this and I'm, I'm happy, I'm curious to see the rest of the artworks and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being part of this. Thank you all and let's have a, a, a great opening. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Martin and Ambassador. Thank you for your words. Uh, I see that we still have some artists uh, joining. Um, think, hello, Greg, you came from Austria. We, we, we took you in because you were an attendee and we had to, to fix it and, and, and invite you into a panelist so that you are so, so visible. So we will, we will probably continue to do that. So if some of you who are supposed to be inside our group here and you are in the attendees, please try to reach us somehow by, by, by WhatsApp or by email and we will uh, try to get you in because me and Martin being the hosts, we can, we can change your position. So then you're visible. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you very much ambassador for, for your words. Um, what you were like uh, saying to us, it is really true that this was the decisive moment at that time, how we were in the middle of crisis and there was a lot of negativity and fear and how we turned this into this great positive, um, group meeting and, and art uh, um, and art um, outcome and collaboration in particular between the United States and Austria, what was so important for us. So of course, um, this only could have happened, could not have happened without um, the support of our colleagues in Vienna um, who were in the foreign ministry supporting us all the way along with this big project we did because uh, that is of course what, what, what we need and, and we were supposed to, our original plan was to uh, have uh, the first guest from Vienna, Ambassador Teresa Injain, who is the Director General for Cultural Affairs at the foreign ministry, at the Austrian foreign ministry. Uh, she was supposed to be here with us as well. Unfortunately, she had a very last minute urgent work commitment where she had to be. Um, uh, but uh, because she was the one we wanted to have, she, she made sure that we get all the funds for doing that. That's <laughs> an important part, of course. But she was also always a very uh, big source of inspiration and, and support for us. Um, but she was like very uh, nice and was sending us uh, some personal greeting messages to all of us that uh, because unfortunately she couldn't be here that you will see now um, right in the chat box um, for you to read. So when you look on your chat box on the right side of our screen, you should uh, read the message that Teresa was uh, sending us.
I would say we now uh, move on to see what the actual outcome of No Place Like the Future is. After many weeks of transatlantic collaboration between a very diverse group of artists in Austria and the United States, now is the moment of our virtual vernissage. And the way we'll do it is to move from hub to hub, from Washington DC first, to, and then to San Francisco, then to New York, and then to Los Angeles. And now starting with the nation's capital, I hand back to you, Eva. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me just check um, who we are still missing. Um, Nicolas is still not here, right? Do I I'm see here, you? I'm here. Oh, oh, you're you're here. Us. Yes. Us. You, hey. you join us. Great. So everyone is here. I can we can start our little conversation with all the with with all the DC artists. Um, so as you can see, um, we were like. Um, I'm talking now in my second role because I'm also the director of the Austrian Culture Forum here in Washington. Um, and so I'm <clears> going to introduce to you now some of the artists with whom we have worked here in Washington, D.C. And I can tell you we were a lot. Um, in total, we had eight pairs, sometimes even trios. We had in total 19 artists um, and nine of them are here today. Uh, you can imagine we, there was a lot of work trying to organize it all together, but we were very, very proud that we had such a great variety of artists. Um, one thing also why we had so many artists is due to the active engagement of our ambassador, who himself got fully engaged. He was connecting artists, he was bringing them, and he was doing video talks with them. So thank you again, ambassador, for, for doing that. So as we have so many artists and artworks, of course, it will not be possible to show now in the short amount of time we have to present all of them in, in detail to you. But um, we have created a little video clip um, with snippets of their works of our DC artists so that you, our audience, also can get a little idea of the great variety of works, what they, what they did. And afterwards, we're going to start um, having a couple of conversations with them. So let's start with the video now, Martin. Whiter shade of pale, please. From Ash Chapel and Mixed Grill for some pernicious English public school boys. Let me have a look. Oh. Oh, I, 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 I thought you were human. Yeah, same here. Wrap in your face. If it doesn't work, there's one thing you can try. Just pull out the plug and wait a little while. Count backwards from ten, then plug it in again. with some sort of ruling class that doesn't like the idea that humans understand it, that every one of them have the full power, the infinite power of the universe through us. little video snippet. Um, I think it showed a great uh, variety. You guys were all really amazing. Um, it was I'm totally unbiased, but really well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It was really great. So let me invite you guys, um, those of you and artists who are, who are part of it, to do. let's have a little bit of a conversation. Um, I will start with uh, Martin Hasselberg. Um, Hello. 
Hello. First, of course, I'm very, we are very honored to welcome you here. Martin Haselberg, um, an Austrian conductor and organist uh, who also brought our big Hollywood star John Malkovich and uh, the Austrian director and writer Michael Sturmiger into the picture, who couldn't be here today. Um, he also um, initiated the special contribution with the two orchestras, one of which you are the Wiener Akademie himself conducting. Welcome very much. Uh, welcome for, for being here. Um, Mr. Hadberg, can I ask you, um, you have been part of this project from the beginning on when our ambassador contacted you with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, you were like getting in all your collaborators. They all also were very enthusiastic. Yep. So let me ask you, what was it with this project that caught your attention and interest to be part of this post-corona journey and, and how was your experience with it? Now, I think we are, we are all living in two worlds right now. We are living in a projected world, what we want to do, what, what should be done, and then the, the world of realities. And I think this dream of creating every day the new world is expressed in this art work. Uh, I miss, uh, when we talk about these orchestras, I miss my musicians from Long Beach and from Los Angeles. Or when we talk about John Malkovich, we have met him for the first time in the kitchen in Los Angeles, in Brentwood of the Austrian Consul General's um, home when Martin Weiss was living there and creating art there. Uh, and right now, uh, there are many memories here, there are many ideas here what should be done very soon. And we all hope that this future will um, uh, happen soon, that the two worlds become one world, that the projected world, the world of ideas becomes the real world again. And maybe uh, I have felt a lot of uh, enthusiasm from all our partners, a lot of inspiration. But uh, we all hope that uh, finally we can express this, not just through media and through the distance and through Zoom, but in reality as well. And this is for me, this, I was uh, really um, grateful for, for being part of this. And I, I could share a lot of emotions and a lot of ideas with many of my colleagues, which I couldn't have done without this project. So it was really something great, which happened here. Yeah. And let me just ask you, because we have a little bit more time than we thought, did you, did you um, when you had this um, cooperation between all four of you in different screens, was yeah. that feeling, could you, did you feel when you did your, 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 your music, did it feel strange or did you feel we can do it? It's in the end, I blame my very, It was very strange. It started when we, we were supposed to do real rehearsals with John Markovich and with Karen Gregan, an actress from Long Beach, from California. And then we couldn't do it. And then suddenly we found this Zoom idea. And then I called the music for in the Golden Hall, which is usually crowded with thousands of people every night and said, can I enter this hall? Is it possible? And they said, okay, if you're alone, if you don't do anything, then I, I came to this empty hall and we, we had a team here to, to record us. It was super emotional. And yesterday, we are, yesterday, two days ago, I was with my musicians for the first time again in this hall and we could play for 100 people and it's emotion poor. And, the fact that we could do this with John and uh, Karen Green, with the two actresses, via Zoom and to be still spontaneous and to create something new uh, was fantastic. We could create something spontaneous uh, happening only once here. On the other side, we knew that when we are together and we can do it live, it will be different again. So it was kind of an expression of the moment. Okay, and the others were also, I, th I thought, uh, on the video you see this is all very exciting and, and, and emotional, even though you sit in front of your computer, so let's hope it's not yeah. going to be the future forever, for, for right? For us, it was a bit... No, uh, we could open the room, but at, at the same time, for sure, we, we felt that our art is not without physical parts. We, we need to be present. We need the response of an audience. and. For sure, it was fantastic, but it's it's not the future we want to have forever. <laughs> I Let's think hope that. Let's us. hope that. <laughs> Let's Thank hope you. it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Hasselberg. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank we you. don't have so much time, so I go to my no, no, no. next pair. Thank you for being here. Please stay with us as long as you can, um, no, because you. we come now to our next. Uh, move on to to the pair that I think made us laugh a lot, at least me. Uh, I still laugh every single time when I see the video. Uh, even I mean, it, it is just 
great. Um, Nicolas Habian and Bill Barretta, uh, you guys uh, created hilarious conversations um, with your two puppets, Bertie Blockwart. Bertie with a T, he's <laughs> not Bertie. Uh -huh. So that was, uh, I, I, probably that was something the Austrians understood quite fast immediately. Um, it was hilarious. Uh, I laugh about it every single time. Uh, the two of you um, did Bertie Blockwart and, and Jules the Bear. Um, Bertie Blockwart is a, is a figure for Corona that has been cre uh, created and, and is spying on people not behaving well. And Jules the Bear is a, is a, a nice guy uh, who also has his own experiences with Corona. So let me ask the two of you, um, you did not know each other before, right? So we, you are one of the pairs we matched. We brought mm -hmm. the two of you together. Um, uh, you didn't know each other, but it seemed to us that you hit it off from the, from the start. So how, how, how was that for you? Go ahead, my friend. Okay. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, wonderful. Also, I, I had the feeling that uh, we had a connection from the first uh, second. Uh, we had a Zoom uh, meeting and it was, it was v very good. And, and I, we had to laugh a lot in the first meeting. And, and I had a, had a great feeling that we can, uh, that we can work. Uh, uh, and, and I think the thing is, our, our two puppets, our two characters are so different. They are so completely different in every way, like how they look, how they behave, how they uh, see the world, how they uh, live. And, uh, and that gave us a, a lot of opportunity um, to, to create a lot of um, fun. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I got excited when Martin put us together. Uh, once I saw <laughs> Nicholas and got a chance to see a little bit of what he was doing, I, uh, I couldn't wait to play. So we just had a great time. And I think, you know, it's just important to try and find in these times a little bit of humor somehow. And, and Bertie certainly uh, <laughs> makes me laugh a lot uh, with his but concerns. <laughs> uh, no, I know. Um, but we just had such a great time. It was so easy to enjoy each other. And, and uh, it was easy to come up with the idea of what we were going to do. And the fact that they somehow have this ridiculous connection through Home Depot <clears throat> from two different parts of the world <laughs> um, was just a silly thing that we came up with. And I just loved it. I, I had I just a great time doing it. And I thank Martin for uh, bringing us together. I, I think we'll be friends for yeah. well, at least in, at least through the Corona thing. I don't know. Yeah, but maybe afterwards too. Maybe, maybe. But uh, don't stretch <laughs> it, guys. Don't stretch it. <laughs> yeah. But but what I wanted to say, which is one thing, what I really loved also is that you and that's true for all of you that you allowed us this fly on the wall moment that we could see how you kind of started to work together because that's something you usually never can. And I remember your, your conversation when you said, well, you know what, maybe we can work off these little misunderstandings, you know, I will not understand it. And then you, and so it was really fun to see from where you started mm -hmm. and then to yeah. see the final product. So thank you very much for allowing us this little look behind the curtain. Thank you. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Let's let's go to the next. Unfortunately, we, I would love to stay in conversation with you guys for longer, but we have so many other artists waiting and having conversations. And and so I I, I go to our next uh, to our next group. We we are talking we are turning to Stefan uh, Diefengraver now and Aphrodite. Uh, the two of you are audiovisual artists, media artists, um, and you created something very special and 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 fascinating because you created. Um, and simultaneous experience, um, a moving experience in the same, looking as it if it is in the same room, even though it's in a total remote locations, one in Seattle, the other one in Linz. Um, so uh, I, I know that Aphrodite, Stefan is gonna, gonna say something here now. Um, so tell me a little bit, Stefan, about, about this creative process. We were seeing a part of your conversations when we did the video and we had this fly on the wall moment, how you were thinking of, of, of having something that starts in one room, ends up in the other room. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit about this, how that was. And, and I think we heard also in your video that that, that conversation, it is going to be difficult um, 
to work like that uh, in the future. Um, in Austria, we, we know that the situation is getting better. Everything is opening up. Unfortunately, that is not the case here in the US. I mean, things are opening up, but the numbers are not in, in a good way. It's not under control. So tell me a little bit about how you think that we need to maybe continue working like that. Please, Stefan. Yeah, um, we had uh, several meetings online. We were talking about ideas and we tried out first stuff with we were thinking what we can uh, do. But also we were talking a lot about our daily lives and because it's also so different uh, from, from here and uh, the US and uh, Seattle. So we both usually work with physical objects to create our artworks uh, with a strong relation to an haptic and a tangible experience. Uh, so we soon decided to build uh, devices to control antennas and to, to connect our two remote places with uh, like in Seattle and in Linz by letting them interact with each other. Uh, so that's how we, we came up with this and then created as a result this video. There's now half an, half an hour, I think on the website it's uh, five minutes, but you can watch also the whole video. And um, there are like a, a sort of oscillation is happening of these two antennas that are moving in different uh, speeds and you can hear like the strong sound uh, got created and I think like, about this, the future, I think the way uh, how we worked or you know, we were kind of forced to work now, like we were forced to learn a new skill and that is also very useful. Um, but I see them uh, more, but uh, I see them more as a useful add-on as an exchange between the artists and also the artists and the audience uh, is a totally different experience. And so uh, for me personally, I think that my work also like on the long run really relates to this, that I have an exchange with other artists. It's also like how we met uh, was uh, several years ago on a, on a festival and where this exchange started, where we now ended up to have this project together that uh, we have to do online. Um, hi, hi from me too, if I can add something. Uh, thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you Eva for um, moderating and uh, this has been a wonderful collaboration and really a challenge to, you know, when you're working with physical media to come up with something virtual. But I think our initial idea to create like this a hybrid soundscape of our two intimate places. I think it came together. So we invite everyone to just watch the half an hour video. It's more like the video, the visual doesn't change a lot. It's like these two antennas that are rolling up and down. Um, but we managed to create like a, a continuously changing soundscape of our spaces. So um, yeah. I'm happy to invite everyone to watch that. Thank you. It, it's fascinating um, because when I saw it the first time, I saw on the video con conference, you had the piece of uh, this thing already in your hand and then to see afterwards what you made of it. So it was really, it was really a fascinating experience. Uh, thanks a lot. And yes, um, on the website, which is already online since couple, half an hour ago, um, you see on the text of the artwork, there is a, a, a Vimeo link and there you can see the whole, the whole 30 minutes because for the artwork box, we could only use five minutes. Okay, thank you so much, Stefan and Aphrodite. We, we go to our next pair. As I said, we have so many. Um, we're turning now to our musicians because we also had a couple of musicians um, who created songs for us. Um, we have uh, the American Hazen Metro, the American bagpipe player from Vermont. Uh, he paired with the Austrian-American folk singer Brian Benner, who unfortunately couldn't be with us with here today, but Hazen is here um, and, and, and will say some words. Um, and then we have Michelle Wolf. I saw her, she changed, she joined later. Here she is. Hello, hello Michelle. Um, and, and singer from LA who produced the song with Greg Usek uh, from Austria, he is also here. Um, so I would like to ask as th the three of you, you, you are our musicians who are here today. I would like to ask you all one question um, because I think making music remotely and virtually, I can imagine, must 
be particularly bad when you are normally have to work together when you sing. Uh, in particular for Hazen and, and, and uh, for Hazen and, and Brian because you, they were supposed to sing together and that's what they did in the end in the song. Um, with Michelle and, and, and Greg, I think it was a little bit easier because one was the producer, the other one was the singer. But, but tell us a little bit how you experience this, this virtual collaboration when making music and, and, uh, and maybe you can tell me about one of your most memorable or rewarding, rewarding moment during that process. Maybe we start with Hazen and then, and then Michelle and Greg. Sure. <clears throat> thanks, Eva. And uh, thanks to everybody who worked to put this together. It's been a really fun project. Um, uh, Brian and I actually have known each other for quite a long time. Um, we went to school together in Scotland and um, haven't worked on a project in, in quite a long time, but um, it went really well, actually. I could see this not going well um, if it was with someone who had, you know, you have different musical ideas. Um, and I think for Brian, Brian is someone who has very specific musical ideals and um, luckily we, we jive on that. And so he would send something over to me and I'd say, yep, this is perfect. We're taking it, you know, and we'd put it in um, and I'd some, send something back to him and, and each time it, it, it jived. So I could see if it was, you know, if there were three of us or four of us, it would have been a much lengthier process um, or there, there could have been a lot more, more problems, especially with such an open canvas of, um, of what we were creating. So that was great. Um, I think for me, the, it, what was really rewarding about it, I think was, was getting back to, to, to doing studio work and um, kind of finding out, realizing that, you know, there might be people who are very far away from me, but I can still make music with them and I can still make these creations. Um, and then we did a lot of sort of interesting sort of philosophical discussion about um, how we can incorporate the idea of no place like the future into our um, into our project. And we talked a little bit about that um, and that snippet, Neva, that we had the, the um, interview early on. So, so that was great. Um, and then incorporating different sounds too, you know, this is different from playing uh, a live show. So why not play with it and kind of add different sounds and, uh, and, you know, make it more complicated or, you know, add more to it. So, so that was fantastic as well. Because you added frogs, right? Frogs from the <laughs> Yeah, so there's, there, there's we frogs, did. So the, the sound of the, 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 the New England peepers, it's like the, it's what everyone who, you know, if you ever grew up to that sound, it's, it's the sound that means the, the beginning of spring uh, and sort of a new hope after a, a long and brutal winter. So it, it, felt, it felt right to add that in there. It, it's a great song. Uh, thank you so much, Hazen. And please also thank say uh, thanks a lot to Brian, who couldn't be here for, for us today. Um, Michelle and Greg, what do you want to tell me about your, your process? Uh, well, Greg and I have a, a history. We started working together 12 years ago, the first time. And we've well, been in the same room together, obviously, working. The first collaboration we also did sort of long distance between Los Angeles and Vienna. So, and also as a musician, as the world is a smaller place now with the internet and email, and we're sort of used to um, emailing tracks and files back and forth. Uh, in person is always preferable. There's, you know, there's magic that happens in a room. Uh, and um, so, and actually after this project, thankfully we'll be working together again in August in the flesh, in person, in the same room, which I'm really looking forward to. But it's been, it's been fantastic to be able to write and work with him again. Uh, this project has been the impetus that uh, the right circumstance that's gotten us back together to work. So I'm very grateful for that. But um, it was wonderful just, you know, writing music and watching it go from A to Z to sort of the finished product, which Greg is extraordinarily talented. And uh, so I knew that what we made, it was gonna work. I trust him completely. So it was, it was wonderful to see the, the genesis of the song. And, uh, Great, thank you, Michelle. Greg? 
Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I had some great moments because uh, we have the time, time difference. So during the day I was working, the night we were chatting <laughs> and, and uh, uh, trying to fix the things. The big moments always were the moments where I had an idea, I produced it and sent it over to Michelle waiting uh, for her to get up in the morning and, and text me back what she thinks about it. And the, the, there was a special one moment where I had to say, um, we, had this, uh, th we had these two parts, we had to glue them. And um, I was definitely, uh, I had a mind to separate them, to glue them. Sounds funny, but I had this idea. And she was like, no, she wanted to have it, um, yeah, one note, the one sorry note. And in the, in the beginning, I didn't want, uh, I, I couldn't imagine that this works, but that, uh, as, she, as Michelle said, we worked together already and I totally trusted her. And now it's one of the favorite parts in the song uh, that um, to have the trust in, in, in what the others um, do. Uh, it, it's a long distance. It's, if you sit in a room, you can talk about uh, things like this. But if you have a long distance and uh, you have your idea and even you sit alone in the studio, yeah, but, but this was a big moment for me where I can really say this was worth trusting her and this uh, collaboration and this cooperation is so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also grateful that we did that project. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I think that was an important part that I, I guess I heard from many artists that you need to have to trust each other when you are like far away and, and you need to do these kind of things together. So of course, um, those of you who already knew each other before uh, was easier. So even more, I think it's fascinating that we matched a couple of you who did not know each other before and it still worked out very well. So I think that is also one of these great uh, elements of this project that that somehow everyone was in this mood we trust into this project and we try it out and 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 all of you with all your creative creativity all your artists you you, you were throwing this in and that's why in the end we, we have these amazing outcomes so I already come to my last uh, to my last uh, two artists uh, that at least for me uh, made me think most um, I had the honor to have the conversation with them um, for the video Erwin Wanghofer the Austrian filmmaker and Kenny Werner the US jazz pianist composer and teacher um, welcome you both uh you two were really um inspiring me personally a lot um we, those of you who don't know erwin wanghofer he's uh, known for tackling films with always have a very deep societal meaning and his last movie he made was but beautiful is uh interesting enough a vision about what was coming later with the coronavirus um we showed the video, the, 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 the film here as one of our last events before we had to shut down everything. So there was just this huge coincidence that I could not not ask Erwin to join our project. Um, and I'm very, very happy that, that you joined and that you could ask uh, Kenny, who was part of, 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 of the film, um, to, to be with us. Um, let me just ask the two of you, in, 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 your, in your conversations also in, in the movie a lot, uh, where, where you, you talk a lot about how the future because we were having conversations about what does it mean to change the future for the good and, and both of you were very much saying it's so important to change from within and the change must come from us and you cannot uh, do this from the outside you cannot tell others what to do you can only change from inside um, and that also is part of the movie so i know the two of you don't like very much to give advice to others but uh, having a big audience here and i have this project about thinking about something an utopia and, and and the positive future how artists can shape that um, let me ask you for one or two thoughts what you think how we can create a better future maybe we start with erwin or kenny how you like Hey. Uh, well, first of all, am I clear? Because I noticed that I'm moving like a mechanical man. There's something weird with my internet. We so. hear you. you. We hear, hear you. Me. That's, that's yes. important. Of course, I could do an entire dance right now, <laughs> which I think would actually be better than anything I have to say. That's it's okay. Like we the, hear it's a bit like the Matrix from Keanu Reeves <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, Go ahead. You know, we... Uh, when I say collaborated, Erwin had a vision that included music and improving the planet in very concrete ways that very few people understood. 
I think if they saw the people in the movie that had the concrete ways, then they wanted, why is this trumpet player playing blues now? And vice versa. And Irwin just had that wide of a conception. And as a result, he brought us all in, in ways that we didn't envision ourselves. I didn't know that my music or my philosophy related to uh, women in India building, uh, 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 you know. Solar panels. Yes, thank you, solar panels. Um, so I really surrendered to his unique vision of the world and his commitment to getting it done. Erwin. Okay. <laughs> well, um, do you hear me? Yes. It works? Okay. Well, yes. um, in, in fact, it's difficult to give an advice what's going on. But um, maybe, you know, there is this, this, this Latin dictum, divide et impera, which means uh, separate and govern or separate and control. And uh, this mentality leads over the years and the decades to the situation which we are having now. All or the most of us, we feel separate. I think we are lost in separation. And uh, that virus makes this fact visible, which is called so social distancing. <laughs> and, um, but what we need is the opposite. Um, we need to be bound up with other peoples, with humans, with nature, with animals. We will bound up with the creation. We have to understand that um, we are not the lords of the creation, we are a part of. And the creation is still going on in this particular moment. Um, you know, there is this famous saying from, from Martin Luther King, I have a dream. And he was not saying, I have a nightmare. So uh, let's have a dream. Let's have a dream of friendship, of solidarity, of cooperation. Let's do that, that we all know about it is right. That's my advice. Peace and be careful. Thank you so much. Um, I think that were very wise words. And, and as always, uh, they end very well our part from the sea. So let me thank you for all the DC artists to, to be here. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have more time, but we give now, of course, also the, the, the room to the others. Um, thanks again very much. It was an honor for all of you, for me. And I think also I speak in the name of the ambassador who was with me here in the DC hub. Um, to have you all to do the talks with you um, and we are very excited to afterwards uh, look into your artworks and with this um, We are done with the DC hub Martin and I give back to you Just Thank just you one so sentence much. to Erwin. I really really loved that line the, of Martin Luther King that he didn't have a nightmare I, I think uh, if you boil things down, I think people want to be positive want to do something meaningful and good And I, I, I really love that thought. Thank you very much Erwin he always comes with the good thoughts, always. Sorry, Martin, back to you. Uh, thank you to our dear colleagues from DC. Uh, I just uh, want to uh, also come up with a quick technical note. Uh, please have a look at the webinar chat. Uh, I read, again posted a download link for later for the virtual gallery. For those of you who want to join us later and for those of you who have been trying to download it and there are some technical issues. Uh, Jens Vetter, whom you will meet uh, later, he's answering some of these technical issues in the webinar chat. Uh, but now we go to San Francisco where I welcome my dear colleague and head of Open Austria's Arts and Technology program, Clara Blumen. Hi everyone, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much um, for hosting. I would like to start by introducing all the artists that have participated in the project and most of them are here today, which makes me very happy. And I'd like to have a brief conversation with all of you simultaneously um, in the interest of time. So let's start by introducing the diverse project. The first one was between international best-selling author and technologist Vikram Chandra and animation artist Adile Raskopi. And um, the upcoming um, artwork is called Sequence of Tenses. I will show a very brief snippet of that in a minute. Second collaboration was between London-based media artist Manu Lux and media artist Scott Kildall from San Francisco. Their piece is called Contagious Whisper. 
Um, I'll show you as well. And the third collaboration was between two award-winning um, filmmakers, one from Austria and the other one from the US, um, Vero Bolo and Pe Petra Piana. So happy that Vero is joining us as well. And lastly, we had a fourth collaboration between two technologists and artists, both um, very strong in both fields, Jens Fetz and Asa Raskin, and their piece is called Garden. I will speak with them further down the road a little um, more in depth about make space and this interactive experience that we provide. So guys, um, you can all hear me. This is the moment where you all unmute your microphones and whoever comes first and has the most inspired thought, just jump in and answer. <laughs> all right, so maybe a bit of a framework. Um, in, the, in the context of this pro um, project, we drew on already existing relationships and friendships, so to speak, between artists. But this project is it's also proof of concept that we don't necessarily need to rely on pre-existing human bonds and friendships, um, that with these new virtual tools at our disposal, we're able to instigate a completely new artistic collaboration between parties that have never met before. So when we were approached by Ambassador Weiss and Eva to help develop this concept, we, we thought to ourselves, this is exactly the moment to experiment. This is the moment to be bold. And, um, and this should be an exercise in adaptability. So um, we thought no one's more adaptable and versatile than artists. So here comes the question now. Apart from the obvious challenges um, in an artistic collaboration that's been deprived of any physical interaction, what surprised you in a positive way about this virtual artistic journey? Did this particular setting open up new um, opportunities for you to discover? Who wants to go first? <laughs> Uh, so I had the advantage uh, that uh, I knew my collaborators, Scott uh, Kildal, already, because uh, I had spent a month doing an arts residency in San Francisco. The first Later. open Austria art residency in San Francisco. Yay! Yes, thank you, open Austria. <laughs> uh, however, we didn't really have time or chance to to collaborate during that month. And um, so your invitation to participate in this project was a very welcome opportunity. Um, I mean, my background is really net art. So uh, working collaboratively online um, was actually a language that um, I, yeah, I feel I speak quite well. I feel like the fish in the water. However, we're living in special times. And so, well, what happened was we found ourselves in very opposite situations. So Scott um, um, had uh, decided to leave to the desert. So he's also currently um, traveling in the desert. I think this yeah. is why he's uh, not joining us right now. In Joshua he, Tree. Yeah, he must be in some um, connectivity hole. <laughs> um, while um, I'm here in lockdown with um, an artist community. Some of them came here to join. <laughs> so, nice. so I decided to recruit amongst this uh, creative pool here and um, the son of one of my families um, was uh, casted as main actor and I, I shot the, the parts of uh, the film in the studio of another neighbor. And so, yeah, so I really recruited from um, the handful of families and artists who, we are, who, who I spent this lockdown together with, um, while, um, yeah, while Scott's contribution was really um, kind of fed by the, the visual and other manifestation of the desert. So, um, mm -hmm. and bringing then this together in a narrative was what we kind of worked out during our online conversations. <laughs> Yeah, and you came up with a, a brilliant concept, like really thoroughly thought through and very inspiring. So you actually thought about a world post-corona. You thought about in positive and negative ways how this world would evolve after the pandemic. So um, let me ask this question to Vikram, Vero, Jens, whoever wants to chime in. Sure, I, I, can, I can talk about it. So uh, 
it was interesting how we found other collaborators through uh, this kind of strange remote world that we live in. So during our first conversation, Adele and I were talking about uh, this strange word, herd immunity, right? Humans as herds. And I told her about this very old uh, programming algorithm, uh, which demonstrates swarming behavior. <clears throat> uh, and it's generally demonstrated through a program called Boyd's, as in birds. So that evening, um, I think that night, she just entered into a search engine, the words pandemic Boyd's. And she <laughs> found a, a version of this that had exactly that title that had been done by someone named Ivan Hornung. And so I found an, uh, Ivan Hornung on LinkedIn and I emailed him saying, did you do this? And he wrote back. And it turned out that he's an 18 year old high school student, uh, <laughs> programmer and startup founder who lives here in Los Gatos, California. And he just jumped in to help us. And uh, if, when you watch the film, you'll see that his code, uh, both the Boyd's visuals and the code that he wrote himself is, as part of the film. And he put in this incredible amount of time during his final um, high school exams. Ivan, if you're out there watching this, thank you. We <laughs> couldn't have done it without you. Uh, so we just found these collaborators, some in India uh, that I knew to work with, but uh, happy sort of coming together uh, to make what I think is an incredible piece of art by Adele. Um, and so apart from the, um, from the obvious hurdles, did it open like truly new ways to, um, of artistic manifestation and, and, and a new set of tools for you, for example, for, uh, for you Adele? Yes, you can. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> for me, uh, when we met the first time, this was my first Zoom conversation I ever made. <laughs> so um, yes, this was really new for me to uh, work in this way. But I really enjoyed it was like sitting on, on a table and 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 uh, having an exchange. I'm always used to kind of cook my own soup. And it was really <laughs> good to have somebody else putting his ingredients. <laughs> and, and we really, um, really quickly found the, the touching points of Vikram's uh, uni artistic universe and mine with the herd behavior and, and the Sanskrit, um, um, yeah. Mm -hmm everything just fit uh, in together and so this is the zoo that came up. <laughs> yeah I mean this really points towards a completely new mode of operation for cultural relations. For, so for us this is a pioneering project that really um, points the way towards the future because the pandemic is going to stick around for the next two years so it massively influences our job profile and yours as well. So um, um, is this something that you will just simply have to wrap your head around and just get used to? Or are you already, um, you know, longing to get out of there? I know Austrian is a very different moment than the U.S. and physically collaborate with your colleagues. Yeah, I oh. mean, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I think um, this was really eye-opening for me to keep on working like this with people from all over the world, which would not be would not be possible if you have to go there. But but uh, also, of course, um, our uh, yes, it's um, something else. Um, yeah. Now, right? I mean, both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, I think in the tech industry, and I'm also involved in uh, television and film projects, um, a lot of this work takes place remotely anyway, but uh, I'm dying to get back on a set with camera people and actors, right? I mean, that, <laughs> the magic really happens. Um, and even as a writer, I mean, I can sit in this office for only so many hours a day before I start to go a little crazy. <laughs> It'd be time to get out soon. I can, I think that resonates with me a lot. Um, and. Adele, I remember that you said um, during one of our conversations that the real reason why, um, why actually why this this virtual interaction actually works or the virtual concerts is not because they're a substitute of reality, but rather that we still recall we have an emotional arsenal of feelings that we can draw on um, while we consume a virtual happening. So once this um, this reality um, kind of fades away to the background, and and this feeling um, we're deprived of this arsenal of feeling and emotions. Um, 
we will um, indeed go crazy because we need human interaction. Yes. So course. I thought that was very poetic and I'd like to include Verbo and Jens in this conversation at this point. Um, I'm sure you're high, highly philosophical people and you have tons of uh, things to add to this. I'm just gonna hand over the microphone. Hello. Um, I, I wanted to actually just say really quickly how lovely it was, uh, Erwin, to hear the um, reference to Martin Luther King, especially right now. Um, it's an unusual moment, as usual, to be American, and it's, it's nice to just to, to remember him in this context, and so thank you so much for saying that. Uh, that really is quite meaningful for us. Um, and, uh, I haven't been at home for a week or so, and having perceived reality... Hey, can you see me? On the outside, no. no. Hi. Oh, I think my my mic space is actually uh, turning on. Okay. Um, Sorry. Okay, Jens, you wanna you wanna jump in? We don't hear you. Oh, all right. Yeah. Um, the mic space. Maybe you should just close it, Vero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe there's a little little preview here. Vero, um, together with Pedra, they will provide an exclusive preview oh, okay. of their artistic I project, Emergence at MakeSpace, and it will be a panel discussion between her as a director and the members of the international production team, Primavera de Filippi um, from France and Lalin Akalan from Turkey. Um, and so Emergence is the interactive experience that you'll experience in Make Space. Yeah, and uh, sorry about that, just, there's actually a just say of audio something. from our conversation that's going on simultaneously in Make Space, and it'll be fun to meet you all over there. Um, you know, sort of one of the things that Petra and I discovered, and Petra and I had a really wonderful experience making a film together that went to Sundance and just changed our lives very, very deeply. <laughs> um, and to have the opportunity to be able to collaborate with her again in this really weird context has been so cool. And um, I think the most exciting sort of revelatory thing that we've discovered is that, you know, we're all really dependent on our cameras right now to communicate with each other. And this dependence on our cameras um, is so much about showing people what we would like them to see of us. And that's so different than what art is really about, you know, I think, especially cinema and storytelling is about this kind of incredible art of the reveal. You know, it's like you constantly have some things that you're going to tell people a little bit later, or maybe never at all, or maybe you'd like to have them speculate um, about. And yet here we all are sort of dependent on these Zoom cameras so that we can uh, connect with each other in this way that is a little bit more like show and tell. Um, so we've been playing with that, and I think it's really interesting that now um, you guys are going to have the opportunity to meet two of the uh, really fantastic local producers because we've involved five different countries in the project, actually, uh, including France and Turkey. Um, and these are both just incredibly astute women who have lots to say about that. And we're doing it in a platform that is also sort of addressing this question of what does it mean to be dependent on these technology tools that are built uh, perhaps not to bring all the richness of human experience to the digital world of communication at the moment. Um, and so I think this is gonna be kind of an interesting transition and really uh, it's, I think it's pretty cool to think that like this whole, um, you know, across the ocean collaboration project has, has made this possible. Um, so I, I'm excited to see what, what's gonna come out of it. Thank you. Um, I have so many things to add, but I will leave that um, for Jens to answer, or maybe give a brief uh, give a brief statement. Um, yeah, well, there are so many um, things that come in my mind now listening to you, Vero. <laughs> um, like maybe I I, I try to uh, make this circle with the project uh, within no place like the future. Um, when we started like this collaboration between the American ASA and the Austrian German me, <laughs> uh, the first thing that came in my mind was, well, okay, everyone anyway is in the virtual community and the COVID-19 kind of forces us even deeper to go deeper inside this virtual whatever it is environment. And I observe since a long time that we have a lot of private companies. So 
uh, actually the virtual space is as public as you would go on a um, square on a street. Somehow we all meet there, but it's kind of uh, limited. It's, um, uh, you know, we are forced into uh, certain behaviors, into certain formats. We have those uh, little faces on our screens. I don't know. So um, what came up in the collaboration, I'm a musician, I'm, I'm uh, building my own musical interfaces originally. I was immediately thinking about criticizing communication technology in the form of an uh, uh, like uh, intercontinental musical interface. But then um, we talked with Asa, we gave her some space, so and then there was, uh, and, and then, then <laughs> we had some, suddenly we had make space. So That's, maybe this. <laughs> this is really something else. And I'm so glad that Aza is joining us as well. But we'll have a conversation with the two of you at, at the end of this fantastic session, not to deprive our other um, no, no Place hubs of their opportunity to showcase their artists. Um, let me just say as a little preview that Aza and Jens have taken this um, creating of a no place or a utopia quite literal and what, the, what they've created is an actual paradise um, so don't miss the opportunity if you have a chance to join make space we'll get back to you in a minute and i'm sorry to say that our time is up but i will briefly show snippets of um, via the art pieces if you give me the chance to do so and thank you guys um here we go Chino Piro Hatidru, Chino Pachi at the Punashanta, it Wimbishanta Santa, Santa Pentena de Vipata. Even a torn tree grows again into green. The thinning moon swells again. The wise, knowing this, face calamity calmly. A hidden agent? That's an expert for cryptography. If uh, the memo virus code could be modified to release secret information only to human hosts with a specific DNA, then we would have a perfectly secure and fast communication network. We just need to find an agent. Why don't you find one then? What's stopping you? They are not easy to find. There's just a few of them. Durango is looking for one. It's a dangerous quest. Dear Cynthia, we are always on the move. The corpse are constantly in pursuit. 
I have been infecting all of our fellow slow speeders with your virus. It's like a portal to another dimension. Everyone embraces the new communication. Electronics meant speed, reliability, and ultimately control in the hands of the few. What amazes me is the viral communication network cannot be centralized. Today I saw several signs of the hidden agent. Tomorrow gives me hope. Your friend, Durango. All right, and with that, I give back to you, Martin and Eva. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clara, and all the great artists from San Francisco. With this, I immediately give to our next hub. Um, now it's New York, um, giving the East Coast to our colleagues from the Austrian Cultural Forum, representing the Austrian Cultural Forum today is Deputy Director Christian Ebner. Christian, you have the words and floor and microphone. Thank you. I hope all of them work. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone from New York City, uh, from the Austrian Culture Forum New York. We're also very excited that we've been part of this project. Uh, the mastermind of now and Michael Haider, unfortunately, is not able to join us, so I have the honor of filling in uh, for him. Uh, we had uh, three teams, six amazing artists. Uh, two of them are able to join us this afternoon. I'd still like to recognize and thank all of the other four, the ones that are not here, uh, Rochelle Feinstein, Ulrike Müller, and Anne-Sophie Berger, as well as uh, Dana Iago. And I hope you all get a chance to uh, see the artwork in the second part uh, of, of this vernissage. Uh, uh, there's a lot of technology, creativity, uh, amazing artwork we've seen so far. I'd like to uh, let's say slow down a little bit and 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 uh, take it back to the basics. And I think uh, the artwork and the process I've seen uh, between Francis Ruder and and Balta Seidel, our two artists present, uh, are very fitting point of departure because they started uh, with a very basic discussion: what does the concept of confinement, of isolation, mean to us? How has it changed our perspectives? Uh, possibilities of our views. So I would like to kick off uh, the conversation between Walter and Francis uh, with this question, uh, how has it changed? And, and in particular, since you play with the notion of emptiness, of void, how has it affected the relationship between uh, space on one hand and, and people on the other hand? Uh, I don't know who Walter or Francis wants to start. I mean, we can That's a Walter three. question. Okay, That's yeah, a sure. Question. Um, no, because like, yeah, we were like in isolation and then thought, okay, um, how do you deal with images? How do you deal with something that you cannot see actually or not really? Because like we're all inside and not really able to, um, you know, proceed, go outside. And then me working a lot with photography uh, and uh, Francis also with like historical moments. And then we're discussing, of course, forms of crisis and that this is not the only one. And I mean, we had the one in 2008 and, and several other forms of crisis. And um, what you usually do, or, you know, sometimes when you cannot get out, is like, you look at what you have. And this made us came up with the notion of the archive and me, my personal photographic archive, actually that were analog photos from before 2008. So before the last crisis. And then just see how this resonates like nowadays because I mean it was even the um, the weekend before the shutdown in Vienna you went out on the streets and everything was already closed you know the streets were empty and you know this was like before that and this is kind of like that made me at least feel to go back to my own photo archive of such feelings when you were in certain places that are empty and, and kind of like what what these places I mean what kind of feelings this is conjuring up in, in a way so um yeah, Francis, what, what do you want to say to that? Yeah, um, you know, I had switched to working with this archive uh, from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., which is where I was born um, in 2008, kind of as a response to the, the financial, the debt, the mortgage crisis, um, debt crisis in 2008, uh, because I thought it, the issues, that led to that archive being developed were so similar to what was happening in 2008 
And as I live in Vienna, I was looking at what was happening in America as an immediate um, uh, a f result versus what was happening in Austria to like an average person like me. Um, and it was just so hugely different. I really wanted to do something about this. And I've been working with that archive for eight, like since 2009, really. And more and more I get questions of like, what, what is this American stuff supposed to, like, why am I supposed to be interested in this American stuff? Which was always a kind of funny question. Um, and when, when Walter and I started talking, uh, we, you know, the first thing we did was really look for, we, we know each other somewhat, but not on, you know, kind of working together is much more intimate situation. And we're, you know, first thing we're doing is kind of looking for commonalities. Um, and it just seems so, clear to work with this together and for me i had this moment of like uh oh no is everything i've done for the last you know decade completely irrelevant um because of course like the circumstances can change the way people look at pictures and all of my work is about how it, my, my work is pictures of pictures so um when we were when when I was invited to do this project, it was like really helpful actually to have somebody to talk through some of these things with. Um, there was a, yeah. a third uh, artist involved, uh, Stefan Geisler, who did the soundtrack. Yeah. Actually, I I have the feeling there was a fourth creature involved, which is a cat I see weaseling around Francis <laughs> yeah. all the time. She wants, uh, but, she really wants me to play but, fetch with her right now. <laughs> what I found striking that uh, you use the three media of, of image, of sound, and of text, and that the two of you who come more from a visual arts uh, background, the actual storyline that tells the story of those uh, migrant workers in the agriculture field who have been heavily affected by, uh, by the pandemic, uh, the, the storyline is told by a text, by a language, and not by a, one of your typical media. Do you want to comment on that and also the relationship between uh, the language, the photography, the imagery, and also the soundtrack? I can start with the text question. Um, mm -hmm. um, the, these texts are captions from, like, appropriated from the photos in this archive. Um, I'm interested in the stories that kind of get carried along or get erased or get re, re, um, regenerated and I've always been interested in text in the work but it's always kind of been behind the scenes so it was a nice opportunity because I thought you know somehow destruction of all of our ideas of what the future was going to be had just happened it was a kind of like you know we're you know there's nothing physically threatening me at this very moment but the whole world has somehow changed so like this kind of quick ideas of what you think the next year is going to be is just completely um altered and i thought to like remove the pictures from that and really go like strip it to this um mini stories that are carried in this art you know this archive of photos um was a was you know and then to put them together with Walter's pictures which are um pictures he made imagining New York as an empty place I thought there was something really a nice like um relationship between these two um you wanna yeah um well basically I mean, just, just to, to say that like the most of the texts are like from the captions from the, the photos of the Farm Security Administration in the 1930s and like, you know, photographers like Dorothea Lange or Walker Evans. And um, the thing is like, it, it, this kind of format developed because like when I use or work with photography, I usually work with sound as well and also with text. And so this kind of like made it somehow, was kind of a logic to have on the one hand the, the black and white images, the text, and then also come up with some sound to have like several media in one and then also, create this this little uncanny movie in a way that that consists of several layers and and make like make it a little bit more interesting and also Stefan Geisler with whom I've been working together for 15 years when I do like photo video works 
Um, and he also used uh, field recordings from 1930s uh, from also an American uh, ethnomusicologist. And so that also fit into the, 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 the realm of like the time period, like different forms of crisis and different eras of crisis that kind of, you know, go back to the, the past, well, 100 years in a way. So, in, yeah. in, in your conversation, uh, and I, I do encourage everyone to watch that because it gives us, as the ambassador said at the beginning, this fly on the wall moment to all of us to see the process and your, your thinking behind the artwork. The two of you seem to agree that uh, the, the lockdown of the pandemic gave us all of us an opportunity to sit down, to pause, to reflect, to think rather than doing something. And you're sort of against this forced entertainment that, that's been uh, pressed on artists to produce something, which is actually what, what we've been doing with you guys, and you've agreed to, to do that. But the question I have is, uh, do you still see it that way? And would your results have been a different one had the two of you not worked together during the lockdown, but had you just under sort of the old normal, uh, under normal circumstances, uh, cooperated on this? I mean, uh, the idea basically was like, I think there were like several other cases that uh, I usually also mostly work as a curator and we were supposed to have a show at your venue at, in New York opening last week and this didn't happen. And then Michael was so kind and we were talking and say, okay, well, well you know, what, what can you do? How to postpone the show? And he's like, yeah, we have this project. And since he also works as an artist, I thought, okay, I'm gonna do this together with Francis who would be in the show or would have been in the show anyway. And um, this was like a, a nice idea to like work together as artists and not always like as curator and artist. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of hope that we can do the show sometime later this year, maybe end of September or until the end of the year sometime. I mean, we'll see how, how, how um, the regulations uh, will be at that time. I imagine, we if we were, I imagine if we were making something together without like this had a kind of deadline and a kind of assignment to it. Uh -huh. I imagine we would have, like my imagination would be that what we would have come up with would be more of um, an exhibition format because we're both kind of collaborating with artists often in roles. So, but I kind of really appreciated this, um, really collaborating on an artistic work together because it's something that I'm actually not so often getting a chance to do. But I think, it, I think the time factor would have changed what, what came out of it, honestly. Well, we still and so in a, fa in a way, this was a speeded up project for me. This was not a slowed yeah. down project. This was a total speeded up project. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting some, some encouragement to wrap it up here. We, I think we, we're running a little bit late here unless Francis or Walter want to add anything. I still hope, Walter, that we'll manage to put your show, what is it called, the Spaces of No Control. Spaces think. of No Control, um, that's all like, yeah. Sometimes when you look at those titles that were, you know, created before anything happened, and also like if you have the title Spaces of No Control, it would totally fit to the current situation. Okay, so uh, I think we just, uh, thank you guys for participating and hand it back over to Martin and, and Ava to move uh, on to the final hub uh, in, in Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian. And sorry, um, but we have to be a little bit on the time thing. Um, so we still have our last hub because we have four great, amazing artists uh, sitting in Los Angeles and Austria, uh, waiting to talk to us and tell us a little bit about their, their, their artworks. And for that, I immediately give the microphone to my colleagues from the General Consulate in LA, um, Andreas Launa, the Austrian Consul General uh, in LA. Thank you very much for being with us, Andreas, and please, uh, the microphone is yours. Thank you very much. Do you hear me? Yes, okay, thank you very much. Well, first of all, if I, uh, uh, let me just say that we're very excited to be part of this project. Uh, we as, as office, as an Austrian hub for the Western United States, uh, we're excited to be part of this. And I'm equal, I thank you all, and also to the ambassador for this initiative. I'm equally happy that we really found it, you pointed it out, for really amazing artists. Uh, I think artists who also reflect not only 
the ingenuity of, of Los Angeles and the importance of Los Angeles as a hub of creativity and innovation, but also these deep connections uh, between uh, Los Angeles uh, and, 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 and Austria in general. Um, uh, let me dive right in and present to you our, the first pair of artists. Um, Austin Fields. Austin, are you there? Yes. I've seen you before. Um, yes, she's so, here. <laughs> Austin is a US artist specializing in non-traditional glass blowing techniques. She's based in Los Angeles and currently in Texas. Um, if I say uh, non-traditional, that is a massive understatement because what she creates is not only glass blowing, it's simply mind blowing. It's really very beautiful and I would like to, uh, all of you to, to check out her artwork um, online at least. Um, then we have Julia Körner. She is an award-winning designer specializing in cutting edge 3D printing. She's also based in Los Angeles and also uh, she comes from Salzburg. Uh, she's a close friend of ours, a longtime partner and advisor to our office. Um, uh, she's very modest, but I would like to point out here that it's thanks to the cooperation between Julia and costume designer Ruth Carter, the movie Black Panther won an Oscar for costume design in 2018. So we, uh, Julia is really outstanding, um, and we all here, the Austrian community on the West Coast is very proud of her. So um, this is an amazing couple. Uh, Julia Austin, um, I really, I not only love your, your artwork and, 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 and your cooperation, the product of your cooperation, I also uh, loved very much the title of it, right? You called it uh, Virtual Blossom, right? And I, I don't think that's not only very befitting for, for your cooperation, but I, I think it's also beautiful. Well, it's, it's a befitting metaphor for the city many artists have been during the corona crisis and continue to be during this crisis which is not over yet here in the United States uh, so you have to bloom virtually or not at all and uh, so I would like uh, both of you Julia and Austin uh, to tell us about your artistic <coughs> operation the floor is yours thank you for the great introduction and thank you to everyone who brought this project uh, to realization we Austin and I are really excited to be part of this um, I'm going to share my screen. So um, throughout the project uh, Virtual Broom, uh, we kind of experimented uh, with several different material techniques. And through a variety of material investigations, we created a synthesis between two very distinctive technologies. I'm personalized, I'm personally uh, specialized in the cutting edge computational design and 3D printing and uh, Austin is specialized in non-traditional glass blowing techniques. And so the convergence of these processes eventually led us uh, to a collaboration throughout this unprecedented time to create 18 designs which, uh, in which we investigated uh, duality. And uh, we are interested in texture and pattern reflection and light, and fluidity. And this project, Virtual Bloom, speaks directly to the unique circumstances and the challenges um, which we as artists are facing right now. And it is an ambition to inspire and to connect through these very new times. And uh, in this kind of virtual process, we explored a variety of different processes, which Austin will speak towards. Yes. Uh, so this entire process was kind of a dream, um, despite the circumstances, of course. But Yulia and my work are very similar in, in a different regard. Um, our work our already looks very futuristic. So I was immediately intrigued to, um, you know, just explore and and expand upon what we could create together and it was really a great process because in the beginning i think we were both we we didn't know what we wanted and the exciting part was the experimentation and the process and we're both very process-based artists um we spent a lot of time on material investigation and yulia would 3d print a mold that she would design and then, you know, it would, um, I, and then I, I received it at my studio and I got to 
kind of just explore the possibilities in the realm of glass, which there are so many things that you can do um, with, with, with glass. And it was just, I, I wanted to focus on like, I, I think the magic happened in the process and it expanded our possibilities as far as like how we can continue to collaborate as, as artists and potentially even develop a product line in the future. So we did about um, 10 or 12 tests in the glass blowing studio. And um, as you see, these are some of the results. And uh, yeah, uh, the one, the picture that you're currently looking at, that is, that was formed by, um, so I, I created a bubble, like a large glass bubble, and I sort of plunged it down on her mold. Um, I heated the face like more than I usually would. And it just picked up this incredible detail. And, you know, the glass piece itself, it, it is this object, but when you incorporate the relationship of light, it creates this magical environment and that's what I really wanted to focus on. Great, thank you. Are you, are you done? Yeah, if you have okay. any more thank questions you. for thank us. Thank you very much to both of you for this presentation. It's a wonderful project. I have uh, two sets of questions and just to wrap it up, you know, uh, please be brief. Um, uh, uh, both of you aren't digital artists, you do physical you create physical tangible objects and um and moreover the the, the product of your cooperation right it's 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 physically I, I don't know if it if it captures it well with what i say but it it's kind of physically intertwined right and i imagine that you are used to work with people around you you uh to work with people in the studio in workshops right so how was this kind of cooperation process for you? And this is maybe a first a question for Julia. I think for me, it was a very interesting investigation. I didn't know Austin before we were introduced for a friend and uh, we wanted to collaborate, but we didn't really know how to do it through the pandemic time. And so with uh, no place like the future, we thought this was an opportunity to engage in a virtual conversation and, and, and see how a virtual process could essentially lead to entirely new outcomes. And one thing we learned through these 18 designs, through all these material tests we did independently, was that the kind of parallel process of work resulted in new findings and new forms and methods which we didn't envision before. So this kind of not working in the same space and working independently on my own, I had to 3D print the pieces in my studio. I wasn't able to outsource this anywhere else. I wasn't able to collaborate with other people outside or within my studio. It was I was by my own. And so that was a challenge, but essentially it made me actually, I got some time to 3D model things which I haven't done for a very long time uh, because I usually work with a lot of people. And so I think that was a very beautiful result. Right. Thank you very much, Julia. So uh, now Austin, a question for you as, uh, um, as an American artist, right? I mean, these are very challenging times in the United States. Uh, the pandemic is not yet overcome. Uh, we have seen unrest in the last couple of weeks, protests. Uh, you see more and more the social consequences of the pandemic, uh, the, uh, the high un unemployment. It's definitely also uh, not an easy situation uh, for artists who are very vulnerable to the ups and downs in the economy. Uh, so Austin, my question to you would be, uh, your work, if you, if, you, if you work artistically, do you try kind of to tune out all these gyrations of, 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 of current politics and the uh, situation in, in, in the US society? Uh, or uh, do you um, uh, kind of, is it in, in a very subtle way, uh, is, is it also, are these developments uh, of the last months and weeks also in, in, a, in a way incorporated in, in, incorporated in your uh, artistic production? Um, you reflect on them. So, yeah, it is very challenging times and I don't think that it can be avoided. 
And I don't, I personally don't want to. I think as an artist, what I am inspired by is the impact that like social media platforms have had on spreading awareness and educating. And as artists, we are in such a unique position where we get to use our voices and our platform to inspire and educate others. So um, of course there have been times where that are quite depressing and, and it's hard to work, it's hard to create, it's hard to be, it's hard to want to make when, you know, there's terror in the, in the world. Um, however, I, I think that, I think that maintaining like a, a just a sense of, of, of peace and awareness and trying to spread that and stay and coming from a positive place and not a place of, you know, violence or fear is, is how we come out on top and how we continue creating our work. And I know I've personally struggled uh, recently with um, it promoting my own work because I feel like it's insensitive. I feel like there are almost other matters that are more important than that right now. And so my focus kind of shifts between like, as an artist, it's, I, you know, I have to, I have to make money. I have to survive, but I, I've just been really, um, experimenting with using my platform and my voice for the matters at hand and, and what, is our current reality in the world. Thank you, Austin, for that answer. Um, and thank you to both of you for your contribution. Um, um, I next now come to, I would like to introduce our second team. Uh, um, that is Joyce Champ. Uh, she's an artist, cartoonist, art teacher. She has uh, made uh, designs for Red Bull uh, and Cartoon Network. Uh, she's based in Austria, but has very strong connections to LA. We also were, uh, you know, had the pleasure to support her participation in a wonderful exhibition um, uh, two years ago at the Bergamon Station. And really, I have to say, her, uh, her cartoons are really outrageously funny. She's a great artist. Um, and, and then we have, as, as her partner, uh, is, uh, her partner is Phil Sevenick an artist, film professional, writer, producer. He was nominated for three primetime Emmys. Um, and I have to say also as a co-producer of Donald Duck's 50th birthday. And uh, my, my, my kids are very thankful to you for that. Um, it, he, uh, he's based in LA and I was, I, was, I was kind of curious what the outcome you know, of a cooperation between uh, somebody, an artist with a you know film industry background, um, and uh, an artist cartoonist from from Austria would be, and I was very delighted to learn that uh, it is a short film entitled "Visions of the Future." After all, you know this is Hollywood, and uh, it is only befitting that the movie industry is represented in our project. Um, we can't show the whole video here; it's just uh, like six or seven minutes, but still too long for for this purpose here. But uh, Phil has put together overnight a little clip that he will show to our audience right now. Okay. Okay. Or is it Doris? There we go. There we go. Okay. Hi, I'm Phil Savinick. I'm an artist living in Los Angeles, and I'm very excited to be part of this transnational art project with Austria for us to try to figure out what the future should look like. My name is Doris Scham. I'm an artist, cartoonist, and art teacher from Austria. And when I was a child, I thought that there would be flying cars in the future. I thought that we would be able to travel underneath the earth in tubes where you could be shot from A to B. One thing we never expected was that a creature so small we can't even see it would make the world stand still. These drawings by Doris remind me of the loneliness of isolation. We are all alone. We are all in this together. Phil portrays our society within the overload of technologies. Loud, fast, and out of control. Tomorrow belongs to the young people who will inherit it. How do they picture our future? There's no place like the future. 
Okay, thank you very much. I, I don't know, I haven't <laughs> seen the video on the screen, but uh, hopefully the others have. No, no, I think no one. No one? Okay, I was Murphy's Law. As I have predicted, Doris and I had met in Los Angeles and had shown each other our artwork. And then when this came up, uh, we were just very thrilled to collaborate. Obviously, we all had crazy visions of the future with flying cars and nuclear powered kitchens. And we laughed about it and we thought, well, that should be part of it. But what's the real future going to be? I certainly am not going to be a part of it. So let's ask the children who will inherit tomorrow. So she being an art teacher, we decided to see what this, the kids had to say about the future. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, so um, you obviously, both of you have a, a great confidence in the, in the next generation. Um, and um, so, uh, so Phil, you have a little bit explained, just explain a little bit, why did you choose? Because I think it was basically your idea um, to, um, uh, to, to make a video. Why did you choose this medium? Um, and uh, what is it all about? Well, do you want to start, Doris? Um, does everyone see the screenshots now? Yeah, so does it work? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. What, what, what the fuck am I looking at? Yeah, so we created a, a little film about the visions that we had when we were young about the future. And, um, and then we, we thought it might be better if we just ask Sorry, Young. Doris, we don't see it. We just oh, see, yeah. okay. We just see your like desktop, but not the screenshot. Okay. Um. Say it again. It was interesting. Doris and I had very similar visions about how ex how fantastic the future was going to be. None of it came true. Right. Yeah. So um, I interviewed children and so did Phil and it was really interesting to see um, how mature their visions were of the future so actually much better than our uh, our visions that we had um, we didn't really care about any social problems and if you if you watch the video it's really amazing what the children came up with and um, it was also great that they uh, they sacrificed Sundays. Um, we we met them several Sundays um, in a row, and they they really like talking about uh, what would happen after Corona. And um, yeah, we, we we didn't expect that, and that was kind of the the vague uh, part of the project. That if you involve more people, you never know, and especially with young young children, uh, the age range was between 11 and 17, so youngsters. Um, and we collected a lot of material, so it was not that easy at the end to uh, filter what, what we're going to put into the video, because there were so many different aspects they came up with. The children made wonderful art for us, and we of course made art. And there is art in there actually that I made in 1975 when I worked for Jacques Cousteau. I had it in the closet, we threw it back in the film. So there, it really became a big jigsaw puzzle with a lot of different pieces, a lot of different words and sentiments and visuals. And we ended with all of the children and, and a piece of art that Doris made where the world is in our hands and the children of the world turn our world into a heart. So that was sort of our symbol, our icon of what's the future, it's in our hands to fix. And these right. thank you very much. It's a pity that we, didn't, we couldn't watch the clip, uh, but I invite everybody to do that later, right? In the, uh, during the vernissage. Um, so um, thank you. I have just one uh, quick question uh, for, for Doris, uh, because all this uh, No Place Like the Future is about this cooperation between continents in times of the Corona crisis. So I would be interested in your perspective, right? Um, uh, taking into account uh, the uh, the time, uh, the different time zones, uh, nine hours time difference, and and all that. So how was the cooperation for you? Well, the time change actually that was not a big di uh, difficulty at all. Um, we just had to be online in time. Um, Throughout the project, we went through very opposing phases. 
and um, it were it were kind of hard hard times. It were challenging uh, times. It was fun and it was exciting. And I when I thought about when I thought back about the creation process, I think the hardest part for both of us was to find a common voice in the story because uh, Phil and I have a very strong background in storytelling, me as a cartoonist and him working in the movies for a long time. And so we, both of us, we really know how we want to tell a story. And it was hard sometimes to, to find a compromise that we both agreed on, but we finally always did. Um, so we had, we had to talk a lot about each other's ideas um, and then to, to find out what's the best, best to choose. Um, and what was really an exciting part and fun part in the project was that um, was the social part of involving the children and the youngsters where we also didn't know, are they gonna, gonna hook up? Like, are they gonna um, get involved? Or are they, are they just not gonna be interested? And um, things is that the kids made friends. So now there is a transnational art project going on with the teenagers of the world. And they're going to continue talking to each other and working with each other and trying to make the world better long after our participation is over. So that's the beauty of this project is hopefully it will go on and on and on and reach a lot of people throughout the world. So thank you all so much for doing this. So uh, thank you, um, uh, uh, Phil and Doris, for your uh, participation and your contribution. We're excited about it. Uh, we need to wrap it up now. Uh, once again, I would like to thank all four artists for uh, cooperating with us. It was really a great pleasure. And I would also like to thank Simone Bliss uh, from our team uh, who coordinated our efforts here from Los Angeles. Uh, thank you all and uh, back to Washington. Well, this was a perfect way to end it, I have to say, to this couple of artists. Thank you so much. Really, really, what a way to wrap this up. Thanks, Andreas, also. Wonderful. Thank you also, Andreas, uh, from uh, my side. And now uh, for our final treat, uh, we want to go back uh, to San Francisco and present to you uh, the uh, project uh, that uh, came out of this uh, No Place for the Future, No Place Like the Future, uh, and will now uh, lead into the second part. And I hand over to you, Clara, to explain how it works. Thank you. I've been asked to keep this really brief because we're a little over time, um, about 45 minutes. So <laughs> um, I love what Phil said at the end. He said, there's no place like the future. And that's actually, that's our mantra. That's, that's our truest conviction. And this is what propelled this project, that there's always something to aspire to. So. No Place, this project, No Place Like the Future, was initiated as an experiment to overcome unconceivable ho the hurdles of social distancing and to create art in this scenario. Um, but we know that art excels in times of crisis, right? So I would like to start with Aza, who is the creator of a new digital makers platform. Aza, Silicon Valley was built on utopian visions of the future, as we all know. And you were searching for your own utopia online mm. um, in, a, in a world where we're all basically um, siloed and entrenched. And you took this mantra, there's no place like the future to heart and created a digital paradise. So please introduce Make Space. What is this amazing platform and how did it come to happen? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Clara. Uh, and first, I think it's most important to say um, this isn't just this isn't just mine. Um, just to call it some other collaborators, Jens, of course, was like integral to the whole product project. Um, Mei Li Ko, Jason Yuan, Wei Wei Li are just some of uh, those are the core team that have been working on this since uh, early April. Um, and honestly, it is a return, I think, to a lot of the values that Silicon Valley originally started from and have been lost. Um, I don't know how many of you remember this, but the very first web browser that Tim Berners-Lee built, it was not just read, it was write. 
built into the substrate of the web was supposed to be the ability for generativity and creativity as high up there as reading and consumptivity. And because that was lost in the second browser, the third browser, due to sort of flukes in history, just literally grad student schedules and implementation, as software has eaten the world, so too has the consumptive nature of the web as seen through the web browser. And we really wanted to roll back the clock and say um, that there was a, a, a time, uh, maybe 15 years ago, when there were two paths that technology could have taken. Uh, it sort of diverged in the woods. One path was sort of that Doug Engelbart um, vision of technology as a fundamental extension to the most brilliant parts of who we are. Technology should be about making us extra human as opposed to superhuman. And then there was the other path, which is the free uh, build a joystick for human behavior and then monetize it business model. That's the one we've gone down. That's the one that's tearing apart our society. And there is this opportunity in COVID that I think we all started to feel and see where these two paths were once again near each other. And you could jump from one to the other. The one other sort of like framing thought I would give is this. There's a concept in design called ergonomics. Um, and it's just one of those fascinating concepts. And it's really a study of the way our human bodies bend and fold. Um, and if you don't understand how our human bodies bend and fold when you design a chair, you give us back aches, you hurt our ability to walk, um, you take away later on like the very things that we love most in life, right? Like throwing a kid up and down and catching them. Um, but that's at the like just the individual level of our body. But there's an ergonomics too of our minds that's called cognetics. There's an ergonomics or a way that our relationships bend and fold. There's an ergonomics to the way our communities bend and fold. There's ergonomics to the way our societies bend and fold. I really think of both humans and humanity as a kind of origami and our technology is flexing us. And if you don't understand and have a clear eyed look into the mirror of what human nature really is, both the good and the transcendent, as well as the base and the scary, then technology will bend us in ways we do not go and break us. And I think that is so descriptive of what's happening right now. So this project was born out of a deep inquiry into how do human beings actually work and how do we create spaces in which the best parts of ourselves can be reflected back to ourselves? Because while technology is not an existential threat per se, the worst in society is an existential threat. And if technology becomes the mirror that we look in and see what we think we are, but it's really a distorted version of who we are, and that is the worst version of ourselves, that becomes existential to civilization. Well, that's <laughs> excellent. Thank you so much, Aza. I would love to continue talking. Um, Aza is also the co-founder of the Center for Humane Technologies, you, so you should check that out. It's one of the most fascinating organizations that I've met in recent years. Um, we will continue our conversation in make space, or better yet, um, this is the moment where we part ways, where Jens will give all of the artists that, he that are here assembled, plus the audience, the adventurous pieces of the audience that want to embark on this digital journey into make space, a bit of a guide, um, a guidebook. Jens will be your guide in make space, and we have an alternative um, immersive experience with the creator. Aza Raskin, who will stay with us in the Zoom call and guide us through a passive user experience in Zoom. So you don't have to download a software and you, you can just stay in Zoom and enter all gallery spaces via Zoom. So just to know, um, I hand over to Jens, who has truly propelled the MakeSpace uh, project in the framework of the No Place Like the Future collaboration. So Jens, um, you have the floor to introduce what this project does and um, give people some pointers. Well, okay, so um, let's go directly to make space. Um, well, okay, um, uh, yeah. Sorry, I just need to. Uh, so, um, are we going into the the phase? I think we have a little mix up. Are we going into the phase now for for starting already the the the, the zooming, or are we going to do this afterwards? 
That's, we do that afterwards. So Jens just explains how they need to download the app and, um, and what to do. And then they leave for MakeSpace. We wrap this up and we stay with Aza in Zoom. Okay, I just wanted to say, so for those of you, um, we, we just have a little uh, view now, hey guys. see how that works. And, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we do the final wrap up. We have our toast. And then for those of you who want to stay uh, with uh, Azar and, uh, and, and Jens, they stay. And the others uh, can leave, but just stay with us so that we have a final toast to close this whole event. Thank you. Sorry, Jens, go ahead. No. <laughs> All right. So um, very briefly, there is this, um, the MakeSpace is a software. So it's not a website that you can watch in the browser. You have to download a software. And uh, in, the, in the Zoom chat, there should be plenty of links. Maybe we just post the link again. There is a PDF online. Ah, I found it. Uh, one second. I post it to the chat. There's a PDF online that will guide you through the steps of downloading, unzipping, installing, and opening this MakeSpace software. So as of today, we have a working Mac, Macintosh version. And unfortunately, uh, yesterday night, the Windows version broke. So this is a very, very experimental experience today. <laughs> um, and I know there are some questions uh, in selling the software. So Asa will stay in the chat and you can ask Asa. I will move on into the make space. You can already see what happens there. It's like a two dimensional map. And the most important things are, first of all, zoom in, uh, wear headphones and those little rectangles represent rooms. If your face is in the rectangles, you only hear people that are with you in the rectangles. If you are out of those rooms, you will hear everyone. I hope this was brief uh, enough. Clara, I give the mic back to you. <laughs> Perfect. And I hand it over to Eva to wrap up this fantastic event. Let's end the screen sharing, please. Okay. Here we are. Um, so um, thank you so much, everyone. Um, this was such a great um, experience. I know we were like totally over time. We were like one hour later than we were thought, but in the end, this was your event. The, you are the artist, this was your event. You were supposed to be here, celebrated, presented. We had over 100 uh, visitors. So we are very, very thankful for all of you. And before we now really start and, and, and our ways part in some of us are leaving, some of us are staying here with Asa and, and looking into the guided tour in the virtual gallery. And some of us might try this whole thing um, experimentally and you try to enter into the website. Um, we wanted to, as in the real gallery opening, um, invite you all now to our virtual ribbon cutting moment at the very end. Um, please raise your glass. I have the ambassador here next to me because he hey. had to leave. So <laughs> raise your glass, those of you who have a glass. Congratulations again to all of you. Um, it was a great journey we had all together. Um, Thank you so much for sharing that journey with you and stay in touch. And thanks also a lot for the uh, incredible audience. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And of course, don't forget to check out all the artworks and the videos and all the important information we have on our website, www.noplacelikethefuture.org, where there is also the artworks all online now and whatever you saw today um you can look into in in, in detail and um and, and enjoy the whole work so those of you who stay with us now and and enjoy the new experience please stay and the others thank you very much for for coming and and, and staying with us thank you thank bye you so, so i give back over to clara and jens and asa all right asa want to take yeah. it away let me let me take it away. Here we go. So let us uh, come over to Make Space. Can you guys all see this? Yes. Cool. Uh, maybe worth everyone muting on the Zoom. Um, so what you'll see here is a full map um, of everyone else that's currently in Make Space, and you can see, in fact. 
that there are uh, different rooms that we can go investigate. So let's see, let's take a little bit look at, uh, at this. Cool, a little bit about it. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. There's actually the full website right here um, for No Place Like the Future. Um, and it's fun because you can actually uh, put in uh, any website you want. So I'm just going to create a new website, which happens to be a Google search for the yellow submarine. Um, and so every object in this space uh, becomes a shared slate for human attention. Um, there's no more like, are you looking at what I'm looking at? If you're looking at the same at something, it's always the same. So let's go over. You can start to hear some audio, hopefully. Oh, look, there's a conversation going on up here. Let's go join. Okay. Hello. Hi, Aza and Jens. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Okay, and hello to everybody on the Zoom who's following you guys. So um, I'm here with Lalin and uh, Primavera, and we're having a really fascinating panel. And so it's nice to have some audience members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to hear what you're saying. Well, we, you know, it's all, there's what we're saying, and then there's the fact that we're saying it on MakeSpace, which just completely changes the nature of what we're saying. And we've been talking about identity and just this idea of, you know, it's like, what, what are the boundaries of your identity and what kinds of tools can we create that will extend those boundaries and allow us to become perhaps, you know, uh, these more um, multifaceted sort of constellations of multiple people, perhaps even, um, and how culture feeds into that and, you know, how aspiration about what we would like to be for as a society feeds into that. And so it's really exciting. And, and Primavera just said this really cool thing that um, I'd never heard her say before, which is that she's, she, may, she may appear to be from France, but in fact, she is from... The internet. You take it from here for me. <laughs> <laughs> but as I knew, I think. Because as I is also from the internet, so he probably, he probably recognized my cultural uh, indicia. Yeah, yeah we, we speak the same dialect. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> when we're between each other, we can speak the internet dialect. <laughs> and then we have to speak back to international sure. English again. We actually are originally from the primordial soup of the exactly. latent space. That's so. That's so. actually yeah. Wow. That's also a <laughs> thing. It's the latent that's space. Amazing. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be from the latent space. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, I'm not sure you're from the latent space yet, Vera, but you might, <laughs> you might end up in there as well. I mean, so just thinking about what you're talking about, Vero, and like the multiple sort of fluid versions of self. Um, one of the things we played around with really early on was the idea of multiple cells therapy, which is there are different aspects of each one of ourselves that it's nice to be able to inhabit. Um, and so we just quickly started drawing spaces for us to be that way. So for instance, this might be my like my angry self. And when I come over here, I'm like, I'm going to express my anger. And then I come over here, I'm like, no, it's actually just all about sort of fun and games. Everything's a cosmic joke. And this is the part where I look up into the right of the camera. Um, and so it's an interesting way of... Yeah, that is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Primavera. It's really fantastic. No, it's cool. Like, I feel like, you know, when, when you're in a conversation and you want to say something, but you instead of using, like, smileys and stuff like that, you can just locate yourself in the square that represents your current state of mind, and then you can say something and people know that you're saying this on purpose to express your anger, mm -hmm. then you can move away of the anger and you can be fine again. Yeah. You know, it's like a beautiful way of resolving disputes. I actually ended up with a, in a really, while we were testing it out, I ended up um, with a friend in a really emotional conversation. And when we ended the conversation, we just drew a new space for us to go to because we're like, oh, <laughs> it's, we want to be like happy and rainbows mm -hmm. now. And so we just literally made happy rainbows. Mm. <laughs> and oftentimes you say that like I feel like we're stuck in a rut or I feel like we're stuck in a very dark space right now and I guess here in make space you could actually just lighten it up yeah exactly you're like oh um also just another really interesting side note is normally on zoom there's no sense of spatiality I can point to Brooke who's above me and I can point over to Primavera who's beside mm. me and this kind of really core human cool. ability of indexability does like yeah. it's been stripped from us 
yeah what we were discussing before mm. before you came was uh, how you know you have like two things one thing is like the digital usually lose the amazingness of the physical such as spatiality directionality uh, volume that change when you move closer or far from people so like the digital usually doesn't replicate those physical assets but at the same time the digital can provide so much more value that the physical couldn't have which is for instance throwing little rainbow on my head <laughs> yeah like you cannot do that in the physical world and it's actually it completely changed the interaction so you can it's kind of like at, at the opposite of augmented reality right it's not that you're bringing digital into like well augmented uh, reality is you're bringing the digital within the the physical world whereas here you're just augmenting the 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 communication with things that the physical world could not provide you mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's quite cool and so make space actually has both it, it brings back some levels of physicality or, or some of the characteristic of the physical communication space and it also enables those enhanced features that the, the physical world doesn't have i love that so quite a quite a um, quite a good um challenge I think about all the time that technology is supposed to extend the parts of us which are most innately brilliant. Like take our creativity and extend them. John Cage, mm -hmm. I think, said that um, the computers were supposed to give us more work, not less. And what I think he meant by that is that it's supposed to like create way more fields in which we can explore um, rather than just like mm -hmm. constantly handing us um, sort of like those sushi boats that go by. It's not like that's the sort of consumptive model. And this is the like, no, you just, you're always in a studio. You always, you always get to make. Hey guys, may I interject mm -hmm. just for a second? Isa, do you mind giving us a little? Um, well, I also love the idea that like the, so we've been in this place. space here, yeah. and now you're here, yeah. and also the fantastic woman in a hat who may or may not be named Brooke is is here, and we can see hi, <laughs> we can see her background. She's like walking around, and that's kind of cool too because it's like suddenly like we were walking around with you, but not like on the whole screen, mm -hmm. just like in this little area. It kind of made me wonder, like, I mean, this is probably too ambitious for computation at the moment, but it'd be kind of cool if we could somehow, like, have our backgrounds blur together. Mm. And then we were in some kind of, like, you know, um, average background or map that's made out of all of these kinds of visual elements that exist. Um, you know, it's like we could take that tree that's behind oh, there and we could put it under the rainbow. Um, oh, <laughs> and then Laling could climb the tree. And <laughs> I am, I am larger. I'm getting yeah. some direction from Clara to go wander around the space. So I'm going to go do a little bit of wandering and then I will come back and talk to you guys soon. Perfect. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for joining okay. us for a bit. Bye-bye. So as you see, as I leave the space, um, actually, if you get really close, you can hear just a little bit of their audio. But as you leave the space, because um, just like a normal room, audio leaks just a little bit. It's all spatial. Let's go explore. Um, Let's go explore. So here we go. Here is Walter and Francis's uh, piece. Um, and it's neat, as you can see, as soon as you enter the room. Hello, I'm Walter. You can hear the audio. And talking to Francis today. Hi, Francis. that's me. And uh, yeah, the first thing that we're going to talk about is basically the idea of uh, containment and uh, having been at home for seven weeks or so I'm make and a, a note here so I can start taking some notes in real time images from the outside but images that came to our computers on digital screens and the question is like bit or different from a reality that we're used to see or to perceive so what do you think Francis so I'm, I'm super confused by like this impact of this moment because I, I'm kind of against these uh, history defining moments per se as you know <clears throat> do you know what I mean like yeah. kind of like why why do we look at art through the film framework of post-war so like the war becomes like the crux of what how mm -hmm. we're looking at the history of art when in fact it's probably more about the migration and the way people move around the planet that has Bro had the impact and not so much the war mm -hmm even if their experiences are coming from the war or because of the war. Mm. That's not exactly what changed things, so I would argue. The main issue is that we're perceiving reality or the world as it is right now through images, like seeing all those empty cities, cities that we only know populated 
dense and now everything seems different in a way that we cannot really fathom in a real way to be out there and, and, and have an idea right. of I will, I'll how leave everything this is for looking now. Like. Um, what's sort of fun though is if anyone Anything else is more precisely than editing when this, it'll get edited in real time. So it's sort of like everything is a Google Doc all the time everywhere. Um, the um, the raw nature of how things are functioning, like this is also a possibility, don't you think? Oh. Yeah, I mean this is uh, especially oh, when is. I look at my own archive of photographs that I've been taking over the past 20 years in, in cities like New York, Paris, Tokyo. And, and sometimes I'm, I'm interested in empty spaces or in, in, in empty corners or something that is kind of... Oh, and now we can hear a different set of sounds. Like there's clearly a conversation going on somewhere. Let's go join this one. Kudan. Yeah, Come absolutely. So okay. Ah, hi. Hey, Asa. Hey, guys. <laughs> We Maybe are sitting in your. Let's go to have a coffee. Oh, I would love we to have a sit... coffee with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's go to over to the coffee. Come come okay. with us. Coming. Look, like uh, this is a nice table up over here. Ooh, nice. Here, let me bring over some coffee. Okay. Please. Can I grab the coffee? So, uh -oh. oh, maybe maybe I just <laughs> locked it. I unlock it. Okay. Oh, so I'm showing you my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll just go to a different table then. <laughs> Where's the waiter? <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. I'll, I'll play waiter. Here, I'll give you some. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, wow. this is mine. This is mine. Oh, sorry. Let no, me, uh, I share with you. Use the power of. Uh... We can, no, we can we can share all my coffee. <laughs> Super nice, Asa, yeah. and the cigarette. And the cigarette. Very I mean, good. I feel like I can, no. Yeah. So I go to another table with this one. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> is, is there anything you else want I can to be a... bring you guys? Well, you know, we have to eat, we have to drink, there's a cigarette. Mm. Is, is this life, Asa? Yeah. Should we, should we, should we talk about something that uh, is <laughs> potentially not silly, <laughs> not stupid? Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, what is, what is, I'm, I'm curious, what, what are you guys finding meaning in here? Again, you, you, this has been a long process for, for you, so how, how are you feeling right now? I feel super, like uh, having this uh, cafe-like uh, impression of sitting here, I can watch to you, hello. <laughs> I can watch to you, hey, hey, sir. Um, you know, we can make new face dogs for new Give guests. Five. Give me five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hi. <laughs> you want to come? You want to join our table? Come here. There's two. Yeah, Asa, come and sit there. Yeah. Two, two free okay, seats. Okay. How, do I, how do I join the other table? Uh, how do yeah. you, once you're docked, how do you undock yourself? Click, click your face. It's really complex. There you go. And, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, great. Okay. Hello. Perfect. Hello. 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 Welcome. <laughs> you know what? I'm well, gonna... sitting. Mm -hmm. No, keep going. Keep going. Uh, sitting here in the cafe, having a coffee. This is just so much nicer than talking in Zoom. You know. Yes. Yeah. With all those. Huh? With all those pictures. I to have a beer. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Cheers. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> here. So this this is something I definitely like very much. Like uh, a really nice. comfortable way of uh, of meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now. So and uh, how about you? Congratulations to both of you. It's really, really great to be here <laughs> in your coffee. <laughs> yeah, Aza, really, this is so amazing. And it was so much work for Aza and the team of typing, typing, typing. Hmm. Yes, how long did it take you to make this platform? Uh, the first version so. we started playing with in April. Uh, and then it wasn't okay. until wow. beginning of May, and it was just sort of a little demo on the side, and I showed it to a friend, Jason Yuan, who I think is one of the, uh, sort of the 
the best designers of the next generation. Maybe. And he got super excited about it, so we started going back and forth. Uh, and then more people joined, Mei Li Ko and Weiwei, who are also just incredibly brilliant. And so really most of the code came together in around a month and a half. Wow. It's a lot of 3 a.m. You know, it's, it's so interesting. Like yesterday evening, I had dinner with a friend that is actually organizing uh, virtual parties on Zoom. And yeah. like, if he wants to make his whole, uh, um, like our whole business around that, right? And I was telling him, there is no way, like the problem with those fucking parties, they all suck because you cannot have little cluster of conversations mm -hmm. that do not disrupt the other people, you know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's so funny because like literally yesterday evening I was talking about this and this morning I discovered <laughs> this fantastic platform which is exactly 100% what I was claiming I wanted to see. <laughs> So you should organize parties on this platform. Mm. You know the Zoom parties that usually are kind of lame? You should try and make a party space here. Well, yeah, Zabi, you were thinking about that. <laughs> well, I, I, I already did an instrument. I, I, I built an instrument. So just go in the room that is called the garden. And there you will find three websites. You have to click on them on them and then the rose will appear rose will appear <laughs> And this is like an acoustic loophole through the whole world. So if you turn the rose, it will change sound. And in my computer, the same rose will change like in the same way the sound. So we can make a uh, concert together. You, just, you know what I mean? Should we go over there? Shall, shall we go? Shall we go? Do we, do we want? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Let's do yeah. it. All right. Okay. Jens, you lead away, please. Enough coffee. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, lead away because we don't know where to go. And for people who are watching on Zoom, you can actually where hear <laughs> where people are. Uh, because, let's see, where, where did Jens go? Jens, say something so I can hear you. Yes, here, it's here. See? Come so over here. I can hear that he's yeah. over on the right side of the wow. screen. Yes, it's here, it's here, oh, it's here, oh, come. That is and, and then we have to go in here. All right, guys, we're entering the room. So you, if you want to find us, you need to come inside the room. Oh wait, is it like a close? Yeah, it's right up here. Yeah. And Brooke, come this way. Ooh. So, uh, now on the left side, you see those three gardens and they are meant to be like uh, pu public, pu public spaces in the internet. So those are websites and in order to activate them you just have to click once on them then they will have a, a dark border and you are live in the website and you click again ah! and then you will see the rows and listen to some sound and someone I see is already moving the rows it's me so and this is you They should move. Uh, the rose should move also in your screen. So, and this is the idea. You can also activate with the mouse. Just go with the mouse. Like it's really rhythmic. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I I also want to move it. All right, you move it. <laughs> Un uh, unlock yourself so everyone can watch you. So. All right. I can't move because someone else is moving the road. That's probably a barrel. Yeah. I don't think so. I just see quickly to join the garden and have yet to successfully. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> If 
we want to do something together in the internet, we have to respect the others that are trying to uh, turn the road. And anyway, effects of the actions of everyone will end up in our computers. And, and uh, yeah, this is a uh, political interactive community instrument with a very simple interface. <laughs> So, this is the idea behind this guard and the public space. Anyway, if, if you get annoyed, there is uh, the play and volume button and also a volume slider, very tiny little volume slider under the play button. So, everyone, others, everyone heard something? Yeah. Perfect. So I, I stopped the sound in my browser. We can also this is the garden, guys. Great. <laughs> Sorry, as we do here, we just sort of like it's, um, wiggle it's, our cursor. Uh, there we go. That was excellent, Jens. <laughs> I wanna the rose goes crazy. I want to give you some applause. What do you want to do? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> oh! I hear something, someone left of my, ah, this is a spatial, wow, Asa, you yeah. are going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just, just what it deserves. <laughs> so Very Asa, nice. Is that something that can make those little uh, things? How do you become editors? Uh, uh, right now, everyone is in um, non-edit mode. Um, because, ah, okay. uh, but yes, uh, in the in the other versions, if we give you permission, then you can just edit, and everyone can make. Okay. One of the interesting things is that when you uh, all of the objects in this space, they're just rectangles with special names. So if I want to make a room, I just draw a rectangle and then call it room, and now it has the property of room. Um, or if I want to draw a mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a face dock, um, I just draw it and call it a face dock. And that's how I was able to oh, make. I, um, I can I can show you. Give me a second. Uh, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna unlock this. I'm just gonna copy this over, and you're gonna see. Oh, you can start to hear them. Oh. There they are. There they are. Right here. Right here is just an image, and there are these face stocks underneath it, which are just- Not just any image. It, it's, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and now we've made a hopscotch. Yay! <laughs> okay. <laughs> as a, as a, this, this gives me hope again that virtual virtual conferences and virtual parties can actually be fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I hope so. In this first time, I'm actually having fun on one of those virtual things. <laughs> yes. Here, let's let's make a let's make a conference center over here. Let's uh, <laughs> let's have a speaker here. Uh, we need some slides. I wonder what slides we're going to get. Let's get some. I'm just going to go on to uh, Google Slides example. Uh, I don't know. What do I want? Docs.google.com. Well, whatever. I'll just look for uh, no place like the future. Oh, no. I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get some really pretty WebGL simulations. So then I'm going to, this is going to be the thing that we're going to present. We're going to present on this really beautiful piece of art. 
We need a microphone. This is true. We're going to need a mic. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, almost done. And now we just need a whole bunch of uh, we need a whole bunch of seats. Let's have them be tall, big seats. We're standing room only. Oh. <laughs> 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 there we go. And now, Jens, if you uh, go make some music up in this box, I'll do some. Uh, I'll do some live DJing over here with this. All right. All right. So wait, I do some music. Yeah, you just. But you have to. Yeah. There here. We go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait. Um, Isn't it? Mm, much yeah. better. Much better. Ma so where does it come from? We ha we have to have some Asa. We need someone, one person, whose purpose is debugging the echo loops. Yeah. It needs to be a musician, yes. but not me. <laughs> <laughs> Should be an experimental musician, I think. Whoa, what's ah, yeah, ah? I wanted because some music visuals for you. We need visuals, it's true. We have to click on play though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is true. You guys have to click on play. Okay, I click play. Hey, Vera. So, hey. Electric sheep. How's it going? Yeah, no, not too bad. It's sort of nice to come over and have just like a one-on-one -on -one conversation for a little bit. If there is someone low you know, people are just Bob Wait, say that again? You are sort of breaking up. You look over at the hopscotch. Yeah. Right where the number two would be. Yeah. There's like a that's the background of Primavera's room in the castle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Of course of course it is. I like it that it sort of blends into the cement of the uh it's like somehow it's very sympathetic. Wait, so are you still on the Zoom? I am. You, this conversation is being broadcast live to upwards of four people. Wow, four people. That's my lucky number. That's not true. So um, th those are just the panelists left oh. in a panel. Um, right now, you still have 19 people watching. 
19 yeah. people. Decreased since obviously um, we're like an hour and a half over the, yeah. um, the predicted time frame. And this is probably also a good moment to wrap it up. Mm. Otherwise, people will just keep looking at the screen <laughs> and, and, you know, die of hunger and thirst um, because they're so too mesmerized to leave. Um, so if that's okay with you guys, thank you so much. This was, in fact, an incredible experience. I'm so jealous of you being in mix. <laughs> I can't believe this. So please, Asa, keep us posted when the Windows version is ready. Um, and... Best of luck with your launch today. This is an historic moment, and I'm sure in a year's time, everyone be, will be on Make Space. And um, I can't believe that we were one of the first ones to experience this. Um, it's the very first public outing. This, this is the is most people that have ever been in Make Space uh, ever. Wow. This Thank is you a so real much. Treat. And since we recorded this, this um, this will be dear to us for the rest of our lives. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Oh, look, Thanks Eva so is Clara. back. I was always here. I was just, uh, I was watching you. I just had to drink more wine. So that's why I didn't look at the camera. <laughs> oh, I'm jealous as well. That's great. All right, maybe this is a, an excellent moment to also thank Eva, who has been coordinating this um, head heavy and very, very complex project, um, including four different cities, a gazillion artists from, <laughs> from two continents. You've done an excellent job. So also from our side, the people that are left in the panelist room, big thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Aza. You did an amazing job. I mean, I'm still not totally into it because Hello. I need to learn these kind of things. But um, thank you again. It's something great that you did. What thank you, everyone. Here? Thank, Thank you. you.